Hi guys, this is uh, Christian from Marwick Internet Marketing here in Vancouver, sunny Canada. Um, I'm just going to do a small presentation on optimizing your blog so it reaches uh, a wider audience and gets ranked a bit higher on Google. So um, over the course of the next 10-15 minutes we're going to look at a whole variety of things, some considerations um, foundationally with your blog and maybe a few more kind of advanced stuff, a few uh, hacks and tips and tricks. Um, so bear with me as we flow through these slides. Um, so pr how to get your uh, blog onto page one of Google. Obviously there's other search engines available, uh, Bing, Yahoo and so on. So let's start with the reason, the question, why on earth would I want to optimize my blog? Um, there's, you, you've got lots of other things you'd love to do in the evening I'm sure but um, unfortunately optimizing your blog is going to be crucial if you want your blog to do any of the following uh, increase your website traffic so having SEO in mind when you are creating blogs and blog posts is going to be key to kind of widen the net of your uh, audience for the for your blog um, with this increased audience it's going to be easier for you to be found by advertisers and companies and PR agencies looking to connect with you and your subject that you write on so um, ultimately optimizing your blog is going to be uh, pretty key to the success of your blog or small business blog so when we think about SEO there's two main areas there's on-site SEO and off-site SEO on-site SEO is basically the uh, how well the actual website itself is optimized. Now typically what happens is um, we would hire a web designer who would design a stunning website and then maybe just skim over the more technical aspects of the website, so the more structural things. So this is a good place to start and it's a good place for you to check out to see if your blog, if you already have one, has these elements because it's um, crucial for that Google and other search engines see that these elements are in place. First one, sitemaps. Uh, at the very least have an XML sitemap um, I'm sure a lot of bloggers use WordPress, so that's the simple plugin. That site map is, map is basically an index. This, it works in the same way as an index that uh, a book has an index. Um, it tells Google exactly where all your pages are, so it notes it's not missing anything, and it can just find what uh, it needs to find. That site map is then submitted to Google, so you know that all your pages are nicely indexed there. If you're missing that, you're pretty much leaving it up to uh, the Google bots um, to stumble upon your content. So it's pretty crucial that at least have a XML sitemap. There is also a HTML sitemap. Now what HTML sitemap is for is it's more of a visual, um, more of a human index. So if, if you get lost on a site, you can click in the footer HTML index and then a human would be able to see uh, all the pages you have, um, which is a nice usability thing. 404 error pages. Uh, bad links, broken links, these these things happen. If you don't have a customized 404 page, it will just go to default um, horrible looking error page. Uh, by having a custom 404 error page, you're able to kind of hook people back into your website. So, um, you know, apologize is that the web, uh, the web page you're looking for is no longer here. Try this search bar for more info or check out one of these other blogs. It just keeps users engaged on your website. And it's another little, tick box for Google. It can see if you have these or if you don't have them. On-site SEO. Um, so looking at things like your page titles, making full use of all your actual on-site content, so breaking up those blogs, not so it's not like a long, um, long-winded uh, bunch of text. So using uh, H1, H2, H3, H4 headers, uh, using bullet points, Bold, strengthening, you know, just putting lots of good formatting into your text can uh, help your on site SEO. Look at things when you're writing a blog, have a focus keyword in mind um, or a key phrase. So it could be, How do I rank my blog on google.ca? could be the focus phrase. Look at how many times that appears in the content. If you're trying to get around um, 3%, so for every 100 words, try and slip that phrase in maybe two or three times. Um, any more and it will be deemed as kind of being too spammy. Any less it could be a little bit thin. So just some guidelines. It Again, it depends on the style of the blog. The ultimate thing these days is as Google gets smarter and smarter, if it's good content, 
Google will know that. It's, uh, they have uh, smart enough uh, engineers and bots that will pick up on things like grammar and spelling. So good original content works great. Uh, easy navigation. So if it's easy for somebody to navigate through the website, then it's going to be easy for Google to index your website and find its way around as well. Text versus HTML ratio. So on some pages, if you have particularly a home page, you're going to have a lot of HTML um, code. So you can check that out by right clicking on your website and selecting view uh, page as source. So that's going to show you all your hardcore HTML which is exactly what Google reads. Google doesn't see your beautifully designed website, it reads the HTML. If you have m way more HTML code than actual writing, text, human text, then you're gonna limit your ability to rank well at all. So you do need to have a decent amount of um, content. So on, on a lot of pages, particularly with blogs, that does get overlooked. So make sure that you've got um, about 25, at least 25% text to over uh, HTML code. This one gets missed a lot, it's crazy. Uh, as I mentioned just a moment ago, Google doesn't see your beautiful website, uh, it reads the code. It also doesn't see your stunning images, it will read the file name. A lot of file uh, image names get uploaded to uh, WordPress or your server in literally the, the raw um, uh, file name, so it could be one 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 five six seven seven nine five dot jpeg and you're missing a missing a trick here on your desktop save the image as a keyword that's related to that blog or a key phrase or something relevant describe the image and then the file name when it's uploaded will start appearing in the html code as forward slash um, how to optimize blog dot jpeg so it's given google another uh, another kind of nudge Telling you, telling it's telling you're telling uh, who's telling who, you're telling Google what this page is about by updating that um, image names. Okay, that also goes for like headers and other anything image based. Check, have a look on your uh, website and see what you can improve there. Okay. So once the website's what I would call like watertight, so once the on-site SEO is as tight as, as it can possibly be, then you're ready to throw more and more SEO at it and um, and you know it's gonna stick better. So once the website's up to date, make sure you do uh, create a Google Webmasters account. It's free if you haven't already done it and it's fairly straightforward to use. That account, um, ver you're verifying the website with Google. You're then able to submit those sitemaps. So you kind of show showing Google, hey, here's my website. Check out all these pages. If you if you're creating new content, it's always a nice idea to go back into Google Webmasters and kind of force Google to um, take a look at this page. So there's different ways of doing that. Google Webmasters is also the number one place to find out if there are any potential errors on the website, um, broken links, if there's any issues with time, uh, download speeds and all that kind of stuff. If you, uh, if in the unfortunate case your website gets flagged as spam, you're going to find out there first. Keep an eye on it, it's an extremely important place to, uh, to hang out at least once a week. Um, you can also set your uh, geo target um, which is which is pretty key if you're using a .com domain name and your target audience is Canada then you can go in and set that you want to target Canada and your website will rank much much better in Canada and other variations of that as well if you're trying to target the UK you can uh, set it to the UK and so on and so on you can also then through webmasters manage your links you can see who links to your website are there any kind of spammy looking ones that you need to be aware of so it's a super useful tool and actually pretty powerful and it's free. So that's not bad at all, is it? So moving on, <clears throat> some little hacks. So we've got the uh, on-site SEO is all set up. Um, nice, good content and what we mentioned there. You're on Google Webmasters, you're checking into that maybe once a week, once every two weeks. So there's a few other things now that we're looking at off-site SEO, things that are happen away from your website that can help increase your uh, website ranking on Google. Some little suggestions or mini hacks um, on how to do that. First one, try and use a lot of the Google platforms out there. So you've, you've got YouTube, 
is the key one and Google Plus is the secondary one. Little things like in your Google Plus uh, profile, in the description of, of the About You, um, just like LinkedIn or Facebook, you can write all about yourself and your blog. But what Google Plus allows you to do that the other platforms don't is you can actually hyperlink back to your blog. And my suggestion here is that you don't just hyperlink www.myblog.com to your homepage is that within the context and the content of your blog actually hyperlink better anchor text so for example I would probably put uh, Christian is an internet marketing consultant in Vancouver I would hyperlink internet marketing consultant in Vancouver to uh, at a relevant page on my website not the home page do that two or three times so it's a, nice, it's a good way to get a couple of extra links in there YouTube um, you're gonna have a YouTube account whether you like it or not if you're using Gmail or any other things you, you just have it so you might as well use it um, update it add a cut chuck a couple of videos in there you can add a link to your website in the uh, in the channel when you're building the channel it asks for your um, website link so it's another good high quality link there as well um, publish on LinkedIn uh, in much the same way I mentioned about creating those better those good uh, anchor text links on Google you can do that on LinkedIn as well so repurpose an old blog something that's really uh, informative and interesting to business um, owners bear in mind they are also people so they are interested in other stuff than than just business if it's interesting it will get shared a lot if it's not so interesting at least you're building links uh, through LinkedIn find do follow links um, there's a big difference between do follow and no follow uh, uh, when a web one website links to another if it's a do follow link then myself as a human if I click on it I go to the website that's great if Google sees the link and it's do follow it pass it can go to that website as well and collect the uh, data on that website and it decides if that's a good link or not so if, if, you, if you've got a do follow link from a high quality website then you're gonna gain you're gonna get some of its kind of cool juice so it's a good thing if you're getting do follow links from good websites that's a good thing if you are um, if you're worried about collecting too many rubbish links um, and a really good example of this is uh, if you're a web designer and you're building lots of websites and you have your link at the bottom of everyone's website but because all the websites are new they don't have any authority or trust you create no follow links which means then as a potential visitor to your website I can click on it um, but Google won't pass on the, the not so great stuff um, buy expired domains if you haven't started out yet you can buy an expired domain which will help you with all of what we've just talked about because um, it's already trusted and off, um, got authenticity try and host your website in the country or maybe even your city Make sure all your plugins are up to date on WordPress because they will slow your website right down. Five don'ts. The last five. The five commandments of not SEO. Never ever buy links. Don't believe anything you read online uh, in terms of buying links. It's all junk. Um, don't go too crazy with too many keywords. Research a, a domain if you are buying an old one. Make sure that it hasn't had any junk on there before. Don't expect miracles overnight. Do not submit your blogs and articles to directory sites and do not copy content. And that's not just from other people, but if you've, if you've created one blog post, don't then take that blog post and stick it in a whole bunch of other places because your website will get penalized. And whew, under 15 minutes, that's a very, very brief overview of some things that you can do to help your website, uh, your blog or website um, rank higher on Google. Feel free to uh, tweet. Um, at Marwick Marketing that doesn't have a G that's uh, just how we roll um, or contact us through the website there have a good day bye